Don't forget, you can reach the latest episode of Potomac Watch anytime. Just ask your smart speaker, play the opinion Potomac Watch podcast. That is, play the opinion Potomac Watch podcast. From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back. I'm Paul Gigo with Felicia Finley and Kim Strassel. Let's talk about the political impact. Clearly, the Democrats think they've got a big winner here in the Inflation Reduction Act, or at least they're trying to make the argument that it's a big winner. And it's interesting, President Biden is already saying, see, they'd repeal all of this, number one, the Republicans, and number two, that hasn't stopped them from showing up at the groundbreaking where they take credit for the projects that are being financed here that they voted against because it was a party line vote. Alicia, how do you read the politics of this playing out, at least so far? Well, it's interesting, actually, according to the polls, most people really don't even know what's in the Inflation Reduction Act. They don't know the actual benefits the Democrats are proclaiming, such as the tax credits for replacing your gas stove, which is one of the subsidies that they're trying to draw more attention to. Think about that for a second. You get a subsidy if you throw I think there's about $8,000 if you replace your gas stove between rebates and tax credits in there. Yeah, I'm not sure that's worth it. But, you know, I mean, I guess if you're going to replace your stove anyway, you got an ancient one, you you know, I'll take the check. That's why I think what they're trying to publicize and market. It really, this is a matter of marketing because Biden's approval rating is underwater and even worse for his handling of the economy. Mid 30s, mid 30 percent. Yeah, exactly. And even though inflation has been coming down, I think people are still feeling the higher price levels and are not feeling the benefits from the Inflation Reduction Act. And actually, they probably won't, because as we were discussing earlier, that there will end up being job losses. The ultimate result will probably be reduced productivity in long term. In some cases, actually, you may see the higher demand for certain things driving up prices and creating all kinds of distortions. And again, those are really hard to predict right now. But just to use another example is when we were talking about jobs and and fossil fuels, the tax credits actually in incentivize renewable developers to site plants and site the solar panel factories and such in areas with a large amount of fossil fuel employment. So there's going to be some competition for workers here. Um, And then you throw in the Labor Department has just mandated a higher prevailing wage for these renewable projects. And so you may actually see a lot of losses in fossil fuel sector just because of that. And what's going to happen? Well, then you're going to see energy prices increase. Again, it's very hard to predict the ultimate outcomes of this. But I think what we do know is when government tries to allocate capital and direct it to its favorite purposes, that there is are deadweight losses, so to speak. Kim, the other political game at play here involves the U.S. Senate. Joe Manchin, uh, the West Virginia senator whose vote uh, was the final one that helped the uh, IRA pass. John Tester, the Montana senator, he's up for election. Sherrod Brown, the Ohio senator, all those votes were crucial. In fact, they were the decisive vote in each case because it only passed with a single vote to spare. So Democrats are trying to essentially sell the Inflation Reduction Act in these states so that they can help these senators. So it's a very important debate. And I was struck by the fact that Stephen Law, who you and I both know, who runs the, he's a CEO of the Senate Leadership Fund, which helps to raise money for Republican Senate candidates, was out in our pages this week talking about taking on the argument by the administration that the IRA is a success. Yeah. And look, I think these guys potentially have a problem. Look at Joe Manchin, who, as you said, was crucial. He is now straddling the fence on this. There's a little bit of buyer's remorse. He put out a statement on the anniversary of the IRA saying that he still believed in its provisions, but that he was very unhappy about the way that the administration is implementing it. They are using it for a, quote, radical climate agenda, end quote, which that he does not approve of. And that's because I think what Democrats understand and why you saw such a huge pitch for this this week is that most Americans have got it into their head now that whether they know what's specifically in the IRA or in the CHIPS Act or in the Infrastructure Act, that there wasn't a lot of inflation and then Joe Biden came to town and they spent a ton of money and now there's a lot of inflation and it's very hard to buy your groceries and buy your gas. 
Yes. There was a May poll from Fox late May saying that 83% of Americans think the economy is only fair or poor. That's remarkable. That's like 14 points higher than in April of 2021, which was a year into the pandemic. And so they have to try to sell this. And, you know, you mentioned Republicans. Democrats are very smart, and they did get a little bit of an assist from GOP members, at least when it came to the infrastructure spending and the CHIPS Act, because those Republicans wanted to go back to their states and be there for the ribbon cuttings and say, look at all the the graft I brought home to my state for chip makers and and for new highways. And so you're going to see a lot of people, you know, talking about those projects as Joe Biden was. But I don't think it solves their bigger message and their bigger problem they have for the Senate and for the White House, which is that there's a generalized American belief that something has gone wrong in Washington and that it's affecting their month-to-month bill paying and that no amount of a subsidy here or there is really going to help. Yeah, I think uh, that gets to the heart of whether or not this is going to succeed as a political sales pitch, and that is what shape will the economy be in in the next six to nine months? Will inflation keep coming down? And uh, people then will begin to feel a little bit, their real wages will go up, they'll feel a little bit richer. Second, will there be the nice uh, increase in GDP, the economy growth? And the Atlanta Federal Reserve in its forecast for the third quarter is now predicting something like well over 5% growth. Now, that's often wrong and we're only in the beginning. Well, we're about halfway through the uh, third quarter, so there's a long way to go. But it's interesting. I think that will determine the success or failure of uh, this effort politically, Alicia. I think that's right. I mean, uh, actually, what I saw the other day in the San Francisco Fed had a study that showed that there's still some excess savings pent up from the pandemic, about $180 billion, but about $100 billion over the last two years or so has been basically depleted every month. And so those pandemic excess savings, that's primarily from the transfer payments, if you recall, from the stimulus checks, the enhanced unemployment benefits, as well as some refinancing on homes. That's likely to get depleted in the next month or two. And then you may actually start to see consumer spending dip, which it's been been pretty buoyant, especially the retail spending uh, report that came in this week was above forecast. And so I think there's questions, maybe there's a little more softness in the economy than some are saying. And the labor market has been pretty strong lately. But if we start to see job losses, maybe sometime next year, I think there's going to be a lot more scrutiny of the Inflation Reduction Act. And you can bet that it, you know, every single job loss in fossil fuels or that's caused by the EV transition, the Republicans will no doubt try to exploit that. Well, if Republicans want to win this debate, they're going to have to actually make the case because for Frankly, so right now, it's hard to know what the Republicans are saying because everything is dominated by Donald Trump and the question about whether or not some presidential candidates or members of Congress are going to defend him against the indictments or not. Very hard to break through with any argument when Trump's criminal liabilities are dominating the debate. All right. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Kim. And thank you all for listening. We are here every day on Potomac Watch, and we hope you'll be with us tomorrow and again. Thanks for listening.